The Case 580 forklift is in need of some minor repairs today. There's these sections of C-channel that these rollers ride on for the forks to go up and down. On this side, they're in good shape. You can see the weld is holding the sections of C-channel together. But on the other side, they've split and came apart. So I need to get in here, V this old weld out, get a C-clamp and pull it back together and weld it up. There's a couple spots on this side that I need to do, so let me set the camera up and I'll get to work. All right, so I got in here and I V'd both of these out as best as I could. The one down here actually had been repaired at one point in its life, so I had to V it out just a little bit bigger. But let me set the camera up. I'll grab a C-clamp and we'll see how good that'll pull back together. A good spot to get this one in here. Ah, it looks like it's pulling it down, luckily. Probably blocking the camera angle. Sorry about that. But I'll get the welder out, weld these up. Let me give you an update. Here's up close. Some of you might understand the struggle yourself. Well, it looked good. Got both sides tacked. And then what do you think happened? I ran out of welding wire, so now it's time to get the stick welder out and make these welds look pretty terrible. Recently I've gotten spoiled using the MIG welder, and these welds are definitely going to show. It's been quite a while since I got the old tombstone out and used it. You can see up here at the top, I started with the MIG welder, and to be honest with you, that doesn't really look the best neither. But then underneath is where I continued with stick welding. I think the heat was a little bit too hot, but I also wanted to make sure that the weld burned in there good. Down here looks about the same. I left a glob at the bottom, but luckily that doesn't interfere with anything. I'll probably grab the grinder and clean that up as best I can. It'll work for the time being. I don't really plan on keeping this machine forever. I would eventually like to run across a articulating wheel loader with forks on it, something that's four-wheel drive that I don't have to worry about getting hung up all the time. But I planned on making a grill for this machine out of a chunk of steel that came off a 1950s car trailer that's down in my field. But since I ran out of MIG wire, that'll probably have to wait until the next video.
One eternity later. The tire shop told me that the valve stem was bad in the wheel, so they put a new valve stem in it. The tires are pretty rotten on this old machine. I mean, you can see there's cuts in the sidewall. They tested it, they dunked it in the tank, it didn't see any air bubbles come out. I'm hoping that the valve stem will at least get me by for a while. That website, TireRecappers.com, that I bought some tires for the back of the forklift. They also have these Bobcat tires that are retread. They're about $115 a piece, so I'll probably go that route since I don't use this machine a lot. Well, let me get the impact out. I'll get this wheel and tire back on. Okay, so I got the wheel and tire back on the Bobcat. Now this little 610 just has the air-cooled Wisconsin engine in it. It's not a diesel. It's pretty old. It still has the two sticks in here instead of a joystick. But my dad is very resourceful, and whenever I got this machine it had a bucket on it. I used it a little bit. Needed forks. You might think this is a factory backrest, but it is not. If you look from the side, it's actually two pieces of railroad I-beam with the top chopped off. It's got these brackets made to hold the I-beams on here, and then the forks slide back and forth on the backrest that he made. 
He's very resourceful. I really try to strive to be like him a lot and take a page out of his book. A lot of the times if he doesn't have the money to buy something, he will make it, and this truly shows. Now my favorite colors are blue and black. That's why a lot of the channel stuff around here is. Some of the projects may end up blue and black as well. But his favorite color is this nasty lime green. <laughs> That's why it looks out of place on this bobcat. But he definitely helped me out and made me something that is a lot more useful than just the bucket. Even in the 70 degree weather, it still needs glow plugs. Cold nature. Oil pressure was good with it running, but the tube that goes to the gauge broke, so doesn't look like I'll be using this this video. Bobcat's a lot heavier than it looks. The wheels don't want to roll. I think they're actually stuck since the engine's not in here. I figure when in doubt, when the yellow dozer won't start, we'll try the old yellow Ford and see what it does. are digging into the ground since the hydraulics aren't hooked up there's no pressure on them the forks are wanting to dig into the ground so I'm gonna try my best to rehook the chain and I think it might actually drag it out of there let's try that
I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. By all means, I realize it was nothing spectacular, but it does just go to show that I do get stuff done around here every once in a while. I got the Bobcat fixed, the forklift fixed. My dad was nice enough to stop by the other day and help me get the dozer all put back together. I've used it a bit since then, so it's good to go. But I sold that blue Ford dump truck to a new owner in the Lake of the Ozarks. He's going to use it on his farm. I'm glad it went to a good owner. I moved some projects around. I'm trying to get it cleaned up around here to where it's easier to work on some of these projects. I've got a few other things to sell, so a lot of stuff's going on behind the camera. I hope you understand that this weather is uh, holding me back a little bit. It's supposed to be nasty this next week, so I don't really know if I'll be able to get a video out this upcoming week. I hope you did enjoy this one, though. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment or a question down below. Consider subscribing if this is the kind of content that you're into. And as always, just a friendly reminder that it doesn't matter if you're working on your project in a garage or in your driveway. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about your project, whatever that project may be. Now that this video's over and it's not raining where you're at, how about you go outside and work on something? My name is Zane, and I'll catch you next time.